Hello guys, my name is Lucas and welcome to a new episode of our Fixed Perspective Scroller. In today's episode we're going to do quite a lot of things. We're going to get a quest info open when we click on the NPC. We're going to have all this generated. We already have that, but we're going to add the functionality to the accept button. So when we click it, it's going to close this window and add a quest here. And this quest is also going to have functionality. So then when we click it, it opens the quest info button again, but it doesn't give us the option to accept this quest because we already accepted it. And finally, we're going to have this cancel button so that it allows us to close this window. So let's get started. The first thing we want to do is make an array of integers that we're going to call quests here on the NPC controller. These are the quests that our NPC is going to have available for our characters. The NPC also has a function called show quest info. So what show quest info does is actually calling show quest info function from the quest manager. But before it does that, it's going to do a for each loop and it's going to check if player data does not contain this quest in the finished quest because we want to check first of all um, I'm going to make a comment here uh, did the player finish this quest because if the player finished this quest we don't want to give this quest again to him unless it's a repeatable quest and we can do something about that in the future as well and the other thing we want to check is do the player meet the requirements so if the player and you see here is an exclamation mark if the player hasn't finished this quest and also the player is high enough level to do this quest only then we're going to show the quest info from the quest manager and then we're going to break so we stop looping through each quest so this player data finish quest i'm going to show it to you it's actually a list of integers and i have two here one is active quests which is the list of integers that represent all the quests that the player is currently doing and this is going to be another list where the quest that the player already finished so we are going to have that information stored here in the player data and as you see this is a public static class and these two lists are also public static and one thing i have here is a public static function which is called add quest and what add quest does is just we give it an ID, an integer of the quest, and we add this quest to the active quest. So later when we accept the quest, we're going to use this function to place that quest into the active quest. So back to the NPC controller, we have the function show quest info, and this show quest info is called from actually this function. I made a function called on click. So if we have more things, for example, play some audio, uh, play an animation on the character or maybe even show a dialogue or whatever we want we're going to place all those functions here okay so if you want more functions just add them here in the on click so then we when we click it and right now i have my click here in player controller when we click on the npc so here if it's an npc controller we are just going to call on click so that all those functions are going to be called and we don't need to call them all of them uh, right here in the npc in the player controller class because that's the job of the npc controller class so okay that's enough for the npc controller now he's more than ready to call this function so let's see what happens when we actually go to the quest manager and call show quest info so go to declaration and here you have First, we show the quest info panel. So if the, sh the quest info panel was closed, we're going to go to UI manager and we are going to get the quest info game object and set it active. So what is this? What is the UI manager instance quest info? So this is pretty simple. I made a UI manager and this is going to hold a reference to different transforms that we're going to be using when dealing with our UI. So for example, I have a reference to the canvas. I have a reference to the quest info, which is actually the panel that shows the information of our quest. I have a direct reference to the quest info content, where is where we had all our text. And we even have a reference to a button 
this button is called quest info accept button so this is the button we're going to use when we are actually accepting the quest and more things so you just do your own ui manager and find at uh, set all the references here on awake so first you create the instance the public static instance here of this ui manager you set it on awake and then you start finding everything so for example canvas is equals to this so we just find a canvas from the game object and then quest info is you just find it through the canvas and etc etc i'm gonna let you look at it so you can take a look and uh, one more thing is that here I had a button. <coughs> so UI manager, actually, I don't need to use the UI manager instance. I think I got this from another class. So yeah, so quest info dot find. And you see, I actually should do it like I did the accept button because this is the cancel button. So uh, I'm going to do this button so you can see how I do it. And the quest info, I'm going to make another button called quest info cancel button. And quest info cancel button, quest info cancel button is going to be equals to this. It's going to be equals to quest info the find and find the path to the cancel button and then get the component button. And next thing we want to do is give it uh, the functionality of closing quest info. So uh, quest info cancel button dot on click. On click is what happens when we click it and we're going to add a listener. So what we do is open a pair of parentheses. I'm going to do this again to show you. So first of all, a pair of parentheses and a semicolon. And then we do this like this. And then curly braces where we're going to set our function. So what I'm going to do, since I already have a reference to the transform of our quest info, I'm going to grab quest info dot game object dot set active false. So this is going to turn off the quest info window. So I can get rid of this. This is basically UI manager and how we add functionality to a button. Right now we added functionality to a cancel button. So let's go back to quest manager where we were and take a look now that we understand UI manager. We're just going to grab the instance and find the quest info. And similar with the cancel button, here we're just going to set it active, but this time to true. So we're going to turn on the quest info window. Then we're going to show or hide the accept button depending on whether this quest has already been taken by the player or not. So what we do is to grab the quest info accept button and we're going to set active the game object depending whether or not the player data dot active quest contains this quest ID. So instead of doing if statement, so instead of doing this, if uh, something and then set active, what I did because set active also has a parameter which is a boolean so what i did instead of check for that boolean first and then do that what i do is just take this statement and place it here something so i don't need to check if because i'm going to set it to true if that boolean is true and set it to false if that boolean is false so i'm just going to set the accept button to the opposite of we contain this quest in active quest or not so if i have this quest i'm going to set it false if i don't have this quest i'm going to set it to true the next thing is we remove previous functions from the accept button so this is already a button so we access the accept button on click and call the function remove all listeners and then we're going finally to add the function to the accept button so we're going to again your manager instance quest info accept button and we're going to add a listener to the on click, just like what we did with the cancel button. But this time we're going to have three lines. First, we're going to add the quest from player data. And here's where we use our add quest function, player data dot add quest. 
and we're going to give the quest dot id because remember we have a quest parameter in this show quest info so we add this quest id to the player data and then we go grab the quest info reference from the ui manager and set it to false so we turn it off basically and then finally we're going to call another function called show active quest and what this will do is show the quest in our book so it's going to basically refresh the quest that we have in our quest book so show active quest is going to be called from the same class so i don't actually need to call the quest manager dot instance i can just call it like this we're almost reaching the end right now we had the function uh, i'm going to show you what we have right now we have the on click from the npc when we click on him he's going to call show uh, show quest info so he's going to show the quest info here and we reached here we did this and we added the functionality to the accept button so if i press accept we're going to call this function so show active quest is pretty simple what it does is loop through all the active quests that the player currently has that's from player data here we go through all those quests and we're going to instantiate a button for each of those quests so the button is going to be loaded from resources so i use resources.load and i found i find the path to that button prefab how i made this prefab i just made this ui buttons here in the content of the quest grid i just made a square button with some text inside and i drag it into the resources folder and make sure to drag this into your resources folder otherwise you won't be able to load it with resources.load so we instantiate this button prefab as a game object and then because we have a reference to that button game object is a quest button go we can grab the name and change the name to the id of the quest and um, how we go to the id of the quest is very simple we just get the quest dictionary and use the i as the index of our quest the i from here because the player data active quest is just a bunch of indices so we just set the name of the button to the id of the quest we set the parent of the button as the quest grid content from the ui manager then the local scale the local scale we set it to vector 3.1 just to make sure it doesn't scale up while setting the parent and then we find the game object called text we get the component and we set that text equals to the quest dictionary i which is the current quest we're creating and get the quest name so we're just getting the quest so we're just getting the name of that quest and later i make a new integer and i set it to i i is just the current quest id and finally i add the functionality to the quest button which is show the quest info of the current quest which we can get through quest dictionary and then use this quest id so we're just going to store that in the button component of our quest button go so just get a component on click add listener and add this line and basically that's it that's what you need to get your quest working so now if you see oh and i got killed by mommy <laughs> while i was talking anyways um and i'm not that anymore anyways i I'm, i resurrected i accept and nothing happened let's try again i open this accept and there you go there's our mummies everywhere quest so now when i turn this on you see mummies are everywhere and we didn't have an accept button because here in show quest info you saw that we will show and hide the button depending on whether or not we have this quest and since we added this quest here we didn't show it so yeah that's it we already can add and check our quest in our quest book maybe i'm going to rename this to quest book and that's basically it so thank you very much guys for watching i want to deeply thank all my patrons thank you very much for your support guys you are really making me very inspired to keep doing this and if you want to support me on patreon please go to the link on the description it's going to help me make more content and with better quality so i'm looking forward to making the next video 
which I think we're going to be finally ending the quest when we return the quest to the NPC and get rewarded. So again, guys, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Peace.